Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're gonna to talk about what to do if you accidentally lift a pad while you're soldering a charging port. All right, so let's be real here. It's happened to all of us. And you know what? For some reason, maybe it hasn't happened to you. But maybe, just maybe, somebody walked into your shop and they had a pad that was pulled. They were like, hey, I was doing like a do-it-yourself kind of thing, thought I could do it, realized I couldn't, possibly did some damage, and I was wondering, is there any way that you can help me? Your answer should be absolutely, and I'm going to show you why right now. All right, so before we get in here, I got two different examples. Uh, first example is literally just an anatomy lesson just because it's got some real good features to it, and I kind of want to you know, show that to you. And then we've got another one that's almost like worst case scenario. It is something that I found that I was just like, holy crap. Sometimes I buy these big bins full of phones from shops that are closing down and I find the craziest things in there. And I just, I got to show you this one. So first up, we got the example. Let's jump on over to the microscope here. And really all this is going to do is kind of give you like a, like a mini anatomy lesson just so you know what to look for because reading the board is kind of part of the job. If you don't know what you're looking at, you can't really fix it, right? So let's dive in here and let's take a look. See, we can see that the charging port comes down to the board. This one has, doesn't look like it's been, you know, worked on before or anything like that. It looks like somebody maybe have tried to, you know, tried to come in and mess with it a little bit and realize it wasn't them. But we can see that the charging port comes down to the pin and that pin attaches with solder to a pad on the board, okay? Now, we're gonna switch over here. I'm gonna show you this other one real quick. Now, I'm, this one is bad. I'm talking about like worst case scenario. If someone brings me to this into my shop, you're definitely getting charged for it. Okay, so let's take a look. See here, and you remember, you remember a second ago, right? You remember a second ago where we had all that real nice, pretty solder, and the the actual pin itself was attached to the board, and everything was great well this one doesn't have that kind of life this one's lived a hard life somebody really really practiced on this i mean this is this thing's demolished okay so i'm just showing you this for comparison we're about to move back over to the other one real quick all right so much nicer isn't it everything's just kind of the way it should be now what makes this such a good example is it allows you to instantly have a like a like a line of continuity here Okay, the, the actual goal here is to be able to take this trace, or better yet, let's just use this one for a second here. So let's say, let's say this one right here, okay? So the goal is this one doesn't have any kind of connection right now. You see how it's all wiggly, loosey-goosey, and all that jazz and everything? Well, the deal is it needs to connect to the board. Well, there's no pad. How's it going to connect to the board? What we're going to do is we're going to do something called a jumper. Okay, a jumper would mean that we are trying to create and reestablish continuity between the pin itself and the next object in line. Okay, and it ne doesn't necessarily have to be the next object in line. Okay, now you can see here that there's a little bit of exposed copper. You could technically connect this to this and you'd be good to go. Okay, so let's go over here and let's take a look at the original example board and see what I'm talking about here. Okay, what, what do you mean, Justin? What is, what is this continuity you're talking about in terms of like getting it from the pin to the next thing? I don't understand, Justin. You gotta explain it even better. All right, so let's pull out the multimeter here. Put it in continuity mode. If you haven't watched my continuity mode video, you definitely need to, but it's that simple. We're gonna come down here and we're actually gonna find continuity to the next point. That's the whole goal here. You're just trying to connect Let's say this one right here, okay? We're trying to connect this one to the next point in line. So if we follow it, and you can see here, if we're looking at the anatomy and we're trying to read the board here, you can see we've got a dark line and we've got a light line. That light line directly coincides with the edge of this trace, okay? So we're gonna go from here, we're gonna follow it. We're gonna go down, we're gonna go over. Ooh, we got a test point. We'll save that for later. Keep moving, go down, we've got another point, and then we've got a component. So at this point, we take our multimeter, I'm gonna touch one, touch the, oh, these are jacked up, like jacked up multimeter leads. Look at that, we've got continuity. 
Okay, so we're gonna run a jumper from here to here, right? That sounds about right, right? Nah, we're gonna make this easier, easier, okay? So let's go back again. What was the next one? Okay, there's that one. What about this one? Okay, okay, okay. I hope you see what we're doing here. I hope you see that we are trying to make connection from this point to the next point in line, which would be this one, or this one, or this one. All we need to do is reestablish continuity from this pin to somewhere on the board so it can just continue on its way, okay? So the reason I like this board as an example is because for some reason it has all these test points you know, just kind of sitting here, okay? Anytime you see something like this, it's just a big old gold plate or, you know, somebody may have soldered on it or something like that. That's a test point. That is a point on the board that during the actual manufacturing process, they may use something called like a, like a beta nails testing unit where they actually just kind of lay it on something and, you know, all those connect to a, like, a, like a computer and it reads everything off of it to make sure everything's working right, okay? But we can use those as well. It's not just for them. It's not just for the manufacturers. We can use them too. It's not a big deal, okay? So, if that was the case, then the next thing in line would be here to here, right? All we're doing is looking for the next thing in line. It doesn't have to be all the way out here. It doesn't have to be that one, okay? So let's look at the real messed up one now. Golly, this thing is bad. Jeez, let's just get a full scope here. Look at this. I just watched Shin Godzilla last night, and this looks like Godzilla came through here and just destroyed everything. And there is no pad left. Nothing. Okay, so let's take our multimeter. Let's do exactly what we did before on the good one. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, now, important thing to note here, um, not every board is a single or a dual layer board. Sometimes you have internal vias. A via would be a you know, like a road, a connection between two points, and it may have an internal one. So it may be that you have to look at some sort of board view to find the next point in the list. But today, we're focusing on visual ones, okay? Ones that are right there in front of you, because I'm telling you, a lot of charging ports, you can fix the problems and make jumpers directly to the point right there on the board. You can see it in front of you. So, you know, first things first, don't make it harder than it needs to be. Always look for the easiest route first. Oh my gosh, look at this thing so messed up okay so if say for instance let's let's go to this right here okay we've got some exposed copper right here we've got the component let's just see if we got continuity we're going to touch the pin and we're going to touch the next thing that supposedly should be in line so boom boom nothing well who saw that coming there's not a pad there it's not even soldered down okay but the deal is we need those to connect. We, we need to make sure that there is a connection so that there is continuity between those two lines. Okay, okay. Well, you see here how there's a little bit of scrape? Okay, well, let's see if there's continuity between that scrape and this next component. Okay, okay. It looks like we got some continuity there. What about here to here? No, we already did that. That doesn't work. So we've got to make a way for this to touch this. But you see here how this is scratched up? Let's scratch it a little bit more. Man, this thing is just beat up. Jeez. So, what we need to do at this point is we need to take this connection and we need to make it meet this connection because this connection touches this connection. That's the shortest route, right? We don't have to wrap it around the board. We don't have to go over, you know, two or three millimeters, which is like feet. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So, very easy task here. We're actually going to create continuity between these two points with something called a jumper. If you don't have anything, you don't have jumper wire, you can take some of your braid here. You can take just a little bit of it. Look at that. Well, I guess you can't really see. Look at that. Jumper wire. Out of nowhere. Got that jumper wire now. 
I would say that I don't recommend using uh, like braid for any kind of like like long lasting jumpers. If you just need to do something for data recovery or you know just as an example, kind of like I'm doing now, this will work out. But unless you're gonna like coat it and do a bunch of extra stuff, don't don't go wild with this stuff. Okay. So we need to find a way to make this. I guess I don't need two. Connect to this and this, so they can create continuity. Okay, simple enough, and I'm sure that many of you are ahead of me at this point. Um, let's just add a little solder and see if we can make them connect. And like I said, that that little pad down there is kind of scraped up. And let's go ahead and actually just get the jumper out of the way real quick that out of the way for a second let's uh let's tin this okay okay got a little tin there got a little tin there that's a little bit of alloy so maybe let's tin the uh, the actual pin so now we have a tin pad here and a tin whatever here let's connect them let's connect them let's see what happens when we connect them And again, this board is like worst case scenario. I, I hope that nobody has to do like a full job on something like this. So we've got the, the jumper here. We've got them touching. Let's connect it to one point. Okay. Like we're connected to one point here. You can check by taking your tweezers and kind of touching it a little bit. And you see, I'm going to take it. I'm going to kind of put it near the other pad. It's right there. Let's go ahead and add some more solder. Another thing to note here: when you're doing micro jumpers like this, the thermal mass is so low that if you leave your soldering iron touching that new jumper for too long, the whole jumper is going to come up. So be careful. And now that I've talked about it, I'm sure it's going to happen to me. So, you know. <sighs> Get a little bit of solder here. Keep it on there. You don't need to bring the whole thing down. wasn't hard. You were leading up to some huge crazy catastrophe, Justin. You were making it seem like that was going to be super duper hard. Like like I wasn't going to be able to do it. I guess the real test is does it have continuity? Let's check. So if we touch this pin now and we touch that component next in the line, we should have continuity, right? Hold my boom. Oh, look at that. Oh, I guess you can't see. There we go. It's that simple, guys. Like, it's really that simple. So let's go over it real fast here. You've got a component. That component has a pad. That pad does not have a corresponding pad on the board anymore okay we need to find a way to make continuity we're gonna make continuity by finding the next component in the line either that or we can dig up just a little bit of the actual top level trace itself we can tin that and then we can run a jumper from the pin to the the actual pad that we created bam continuity not that big a deal let me clean this up a little bit all right, and the last thing I'm going to leave you with here is if we take a look inside here, we see we've got a little bit of excess. Um, you know how if you take a paper clip and you, and you keep bending it, after a while it just snaps? Same concept applies right here, right now. Watch this. 
We're gonna take our jumper. We're gonna back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, we're gonna get the paper clip effect. Look at that. Don't forget, guys. If you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.